How's it going ladies and gents? This is Jeff Benjamin and I want to talk to you about the new version of LumaFusion version 3.1 which just launched today. Now you guys know I've been a big fan of Luma for a very long time but this new update really is something else. Let me tell you because LumaFusion 3.1 includes real-time scopes to monitor your video. That is awesome. So that's the first thing I wanna talk about. Let's go ahead and launch LumaFusion version 3.1 here on my iPad Pro. And here it is, familiar interface. You guys know I've been a big fan of this app for a very long time. It is, in my opinion, by far, one of the most impressive iPhone and iPad apps available on the App Store. So one of the things I really appreciate about LumaFusion is that it supports multiple color spaces. So if you like to edit and deliver HDR video, then no problem. You can go into project settings and select a wide gamut color space just like that. Super simple, super easy. Now let's talk about those scopes because whether you're editing HDR video or SDR video, doesn't matter, scopes can come in handy. So we're gonna talk about how to use those. All you need to do is go into the clip editor by double clicking on a clip and here's where you, you know, normally can go in and adjust a clip so you can change the fit mode or change the cropping or the size and position, super easy, right? But if you click this tab right here, the color and effects tab, you'll see something new in version 3.1. So you have your effects in the upper right hand corner, but look in the upper left hand corner. You see that little button? That is your scopes button. You click that and there are your video scopes just like that. And what's cool? These are real-time scopes. So if you start playing back your footage for this clip, you're gonna see those scopes change in real time based on the video that's being displayed in the viewer right above it. So I can drag my playhead for instance, and you'll see that change up real quick, just like that. Now, if you notice at the top of the video scopes interface, you'll see a little drag handle. So you can actually use that to drag the video scopes interface up like that and you'll see the luminance values on your waveform scope appear as well. And when you drag, it pushes the video up to the top until it meets the actual UI of LumaFusion, and then it'll start covering the video as you drag more. So you can adjust it to your liking, but in most cases, you probably wanna see your viewer at the same time. So let's talk about the three different video scopes. Here you have your histogram, followed by your waveform, followed by the vector scope. So for each of these scopes, you'll see a little chevron button in the upper left-hand corner, and that allows you to adjust the settings for that scope. And it actually will allow you to change the type of scope being displayed. So you can actually choose to display two waveforms, for instance, or two vector scopes if you want to. And then you can change the actual settings for those individual scopes as well. So for the histogram, you can choose an overlay or horizontal parade or a vertical parade, which breaks down each of the color channels. And then you can actually enable or disable any of those color channels as well, RGB. And then you can go in and mix and match the settings. So horizontal parade without the blue channel, or you can re-enable that. You can enable the Luma channel if you want to as well, and then go back to the overlay, etc. So the histogram displays your luminance values in a horizontal layout. So the left is gonna be the darkest, the right meaning the brightest. But it only shows you a percentage of the pixels in your image that are at those values. I like the waveform because it actually like mirrors your image from left to right, so you can kind of get an idea of what areas are actually the bright areas, which areas are the dark shadows. You can switch between luminance and chrominance. And like I was saying, it really displays your image or it's like a mirror of your image from left to right. So uh, let's go ahead and play back this clip. So that bright blob in the middle is that envelope I'm holding. And then you'll see here in just a second a window and you can see how it really is bright right there where the window is to match right up there. So that's a very handy little tool to use to make sure you're not clipping your highlights. It's a very handy tool and it's a welcome addition to LumaFusion 3.1. And then finally, your vector scope, while having nothing to do with the actual exposure, can help you with dialing in your color values just right. Now, like I showed you before, you can enable or disable your scopes just by clicking this button. But if you long press that button, you can choose between your various scope layouts. So you have your standard three up layout, a two up layout, a two up layout with one side smaller, one side larger and vice versa. And then you have a two up layout here in vertical and that looks really nice. And then you have a one up layout. So if you only need your waveform, for instance, it might be nice to switch to that one up layout. And that can be very helpful if you just wanna focus in this case 
own exposure. So that's a look at the real-time scopes in LumaFusion 3.1. What do you guys think? Now 3.1 also gives you multiple LUTs and multiple effects on a single clip. So here I'm in the clip editor in colors and effects. On the LUT tab, I select a LUT and I can of course adjust that blend if I want to. And I'm gonna select another. So previously on the previous version of LumaFusion, you couldn't select multiple LUTs, but here in 3.1 you can. And you can also go in and reorder those LUTs as well. And that will make an effect on the final output of your image, just like that. But like I said, you can also add multiple effects. You can stack effects if you want to. Couldn't do that on the previous version of LumaFusion, but in 3.1, you can do just that. So I'm gonna go in and add a lot of different effects here. So I have warm up, contrast, vibrance. I'm gonna go in and add bump and some blur and a cool effect. All right, so now let's talk about one of my favorite new features, timeline lasso selection. So now you get this little lasso when you drag your cursor using a mouse or trackpad in LumaFusion 3.1 and it makes selecting multiple clips on the timeline that much easier. So you can see I have those clips selected. Let me show you again. Just drag like this, select multiple clips. Yeah, that's a welcome new addition for trackpad users. There's also improved drag and drop. So previously you had a sort of click and pause before you could drag your item to the timeline, but now you simply just click and drag. There's no hesitation, there's no wait. You click, you drag, it's there on the timeline. Let me show you again. So click, drag, just like that. Super simple, super easy. But of course, clips aren't the only thing you can drag. You can go into your transitions, for instance, if you want to, or in your titles. Um, let's go into transitions and let's just drag one of those down to our timeline between these two clips. So we'll grab that, drag it, center it and drop it. Let's play it back. And there you go. So let's talk about some other features here in LumaFusion, the ability to reorder audio effects. So if I go into the clip editor again, I'll just break that audio clip out and go into the clip editor and now I'm just gonna add an audio effect and I'm gonna add a second. And now watch, drag handles, I can easily reorder those. And the order can actually change the way your final output sounds. So rearrange wisely. Now automated project backup management now stores current backups plus one per day for the last 30 days and one per month for prior months. So you can rest easy knowing that your projects are safely backed up. Now, speaking of backups, what about importing and restoring them? Well, there's a new import and restore feature. You just click there in your project browser and LumaFusion 3.1 makes it easy to find and restore your automated project backups. So I can simply click on one of these guys. So let's find one. How about that one? And then in the upper right hand corner, click this button and it restores just like that. So now, I can open up that project just like that. And now there are lots of new keyboard shortcuts to be found here in LumaFusion 3.1. And these are welcome new additions. For instance, you can use Command I to import media using your keyboard. So Command I, there's your import screen. But of course that is not all. You can also select all in your project browser. So if I use Command A, Watch what happens here. Command A, see, selecting all the clips there in the browser. And I can also quickly add a transition just by tapping the T key on my keyboard. There you go. Another handy shortcut, the ability to disable a clip. So we'll go ahead and disable that clip with the keyboard shortcut like that. And you can also use shortcuts to quickly switch between LumaFusion's six different layouts. That's really handy. You can also zoom in now Using a keyboard shortcut, command equals, command minus to zoom out. You can view clip details and you can also have a full screen viewer like that. So ladies and gentlemen, that is a look at LumaFusion 3.1. Obviously, scopes are the headline feature as they should be. This is a very big deal for pro users who up until now have basically just had to rely on what's being displayed on screen, but now you get sort of the X-ray behind the scenes look at what is really being displayed as far as luminous values and color values, thanks to those scopes. Super handy feature, can't be overstated. But one thing I did notice, if you disable the color and effects tab, 
your scopes go away, maybe in future versions of LumaFusion, we'll be able to view those scopes in other areas. But hey, I'm not complaining because this is a free update. If you already own LumaFusion, you get this free right now. And if you don't already own LumaFusion, I think it's $30 well spent. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with Cellular.